I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Aaron Tilton, the CEO of SmartFi. Aaron, welcome to the show and thank you so much for taking the time to come on today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Ashton. Appreciate it. You're very welcome. I'd love to dive into the intricacies of DeFi, uh, but first, let's start with a little bit on your background, how you got involved in the space, and what led you to starting SmartFi. So uh, my background a little bit is uh, I'm a former state legislator, and uh, our, our business is not new. It's actually uh, almost 15 years old, and we previously uh, developed nuclear power plant sites and owned an oil and gas pipeline business. So we were in the energy infrastructure business. Hmm. Uh, yeah. How we kind of got to where we are in crypto is uh, about 2017, the very beginning of 2017, we started getting all these crazy calls from cryptocurrency miners uh, wanting to know if we had uh, you know, large scale power. And uh, that's where our introduction was. We thought, what are you guys doing with all this electricity, right? Yeah. And uh, so we, we started uh, working on projects with them to locate their power in different places. The market cratered, as everybody knows, uh, at the beginning of 2018. And so a lot of the projects that we were working with, they, they all of a sudden they said, gosh, our crypto is worth, you know, one tenth of what it was before. So we're going to have to put our project on hold. So we said, well, why don't we loan you the money? Will you give us your crypto? We'll lend mm -hmm. you the money. And that's how it started. Smart. Yeah. And I'm guessing those companies that stuck to it in the bear market, now realize that they it's a, it's a good thing they did <laughs> um a lot of those guys made a killing you know because they were they were mining it you know their cost was maybe uh twenty eight hundred dollars and because we were lending the money to keep them going uh you know they started selling off at the end of uh, last year and and first part of this year so they mm -hmm. made x on that on that mining Amazing. And maybe you yeah. can touch a little bit on an overview of SmartFi, some of the solutions uh, that you've now integrated into that uh, and bringing that into the DeFi world. Yeah. So as we made our, our loans and, you know, up to that time, we had done about a, you know, a little over a billion in, in loans and transactions. And so mostly what we were doing was high net worth, uh, large wells and high net worth individuals who either uh, acquired their crypto through the early days of buying it, some of it mining it. And uh, so our, our client base was smaller, but it was very high net worth. Mm -hmm. So we took all of the learnings that we had from servicing those customers. And we have our own trade desk, our own liquidity with different hedge funds and capital partners and everybody that we deal with. And now we've built an automated uh, open lending platform so that you can go to the platform, get a loan, post your cryptocurrency. We give uh, the coin interest accounts or smart interest is what it's called. Uh, we also have our own exchange now. So we've broadened the platform to really make all of our uh, knowledge and experience in the crypto space available to the average person. And that mm -hmm. was really our goal is to make the average user um, put them on par with a large scale, you know, high net worth individual. Definitely. Yeah. And going from giving out large loans to now making it more accessible to everybody. Uh, it, when you started developing the solutions to have this accessible to everybody, what were the problems that you pinpointed uh, within the DeFi industry? Was it just that more access to capital and being able to do what you do to a larger audience? Well, yes. I mean, those are kind of the average kind of problems that we were looking at. But the biggest one that really underpins what makes us different is that um, our project has really kind of built our technology over the last four years. We've, we've innovated our technology from the problems that we saw. The mm -hmm. primary one was this. A mining company was coming to us looking for safety. When you mine cryptocurrency, the crypto comes to you already fully entrenched in risk, right? It's highly volatile. Um, you know, just all the issues that are related to cryptocurrency. So what they were looking for for us was actually safety. Mm -hmm. And so we provided them a, not an exactly correlated hedge, but a hedge nonetheless. They still have risk because of margin call and some other things like that. Mm -hmm. So what we did is said, look, what if you could mine a currency 
that when it came to you, it was already fully hedged. Or if you had a cryptocurrency that you could buy that had an index to a fundamental that gave you a hedge so that you had a basis that would never change and it gave you a free option. So when you buy it, you have the optionality to keep it and watch what the market does. And if it runs up, you get to generate the PL and realize that PL, uh, realize those profits. Uh, but if it didn't do what you thought it should, you could always get back the original purchase price that you paid for it. Mm -hmm. That's what we've done at SmartFi. That's what makes us different is that our, our platform and our funding for the platform, we've changed or we're giving a new option, which is when you buy the SmartFi token, uh, and, and it's dollar denominated, so you buy, let's say it cost you, you know, $5, any time after a year, 10 years, whenever it was, you could come back to us and put the token to us and we would give you your $5 back. And the reason wow. we're able to do that is because we use a loanable funds model like a private bank would or mm -hmm. similar to a private bank. So we've already, we don't use the money that we get in our token sale. And, and it's this token sale is actually, it, it's not your typical token sale. We don't try to sell of our tokens at once. Actually, what we do is just try to fund the loan demand that we have. Mm -hmm. So the lower the price in the token is in the beginning, funds the loans and it's an index. So as the tranches move up, so does the price of the token because our loan portfolio is growing. So it creates a natural hedge with exact correlation. So that's you know very different from what other people do. Yeah, that is very different. Uh, it's a nice incorporation of you know the, the your previous business and, and having those loans, and then also having the hedge that is necessary in crypto with the volatility. So that's really interesting, yeah. Aaron. <clears throat> and um, it effectively, if yeah. you buy the token, it's like better than owning a bank. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And, and in terms of early adopters and getting more people that, you know, they're not minors, they're not large institutions, regular users involved into the platform, um, is the purchasing the, the SmartFi tokens and getting involved uh, to be able to use those products, um, is that the incentive of getting in early or how are you incentivizing users to start utilizing these services? Well, so the, the primary reason around that is that if you buy the token early, it's cheaper, right? I mean, it's like mm -hmm. everything yeah. else. It has an index. But it also, I don't, I don't want to discourage people from that part of it. Like if I didn't buy into the very beginning, I'm not going to give a capital appreciation because it's indexed. No matter when you buy it, as long as we're making more loans, you're going to get these great returns, right? You're gonna, mm -hmm. and again, I have to be careful about what I say because we're not guaranteeing anything. Yeah. But the opportunity is always there because of the index. You know, a lot of people are lament that they didn't buy Bitcoin at a dollar or whatever it is, right? And so I wonder if it's really a good time to buy Bitcoin or Ethereum. And and the really the, the, the basis behind that is that those cryptocurrencies, while they serve a utility for a payment system, they don't have a structure like a loanable funds model that can provide an index. So in our process, no matter when you buy it, it's a good time to buy it. Right, because mm -hmm. of the, but so the the motivation for that is that earlier is better, as everybody knows. Um, but there are a couple of things. We have our own stable coin, and it's mineable. Uh, and, and some of the utility around that, we it, we're probably limited on time. But what I would like to basically say is that because of again the loanable funds model to create the hedge, we have no transaction fees for our stable coin mm -hmm. ever. Right. And that's because the miners that record the transactions on our, our blockchain actually get paid a portion of the interest that we charge on the loans. So their incentives are aligned with ours and they're aligned with the users where the users never want a transaction fee. You know, that's one of the worst things that, uh, about cryptocurrencies is they use some of the worst features that they adopted from the current banking systems, mm -hmm. like a fee. Everybody hates to have a fee and be nickel to nine. It's like a tax. You, you know, they tax you for using your own property. So that was one of the other things that we solved with our process is having a mineable stable coin that has no fees. That's really interesting. And you mentioned there that it's sort of running on SmartFi's protocol. Um, is that fully interoperable or uh, with 
some of the major DeFi platforms and, and moving from the stablecoin to SmartFi and the other cryptocurrencies that are on the platform? Um, or is it more of an isolated system? Currently, we you have two ways to interact with it. One is on our CFI platform, but we, uh, in about 30 days, we're launching our DEX. So the DEX is fully interoperable, right? So it's a non-custodial wallet with its own decentralized exchange that supports basically 99% of all cryptocurrencies. So you can start to swap it out there. So on that platform, fully interoperable, you can trade SmartFi for Bitcoin, for Ethereum, for whatever you want to do. Uh, so you can download the DEX. Uh, we, we actually have a technology partner in the Komodo community where we forked some of their technology and then we incorporated a lot of our algorithms and our innovations around our block, uh, block reward that convert that so it doesn't have any transaction fees. So a lot of that will be interoperable through our own DEX. And we found that that was an easier way to get the interoperability instead of trying to get it listed everywhere else. We mm -hmm. just give everybody a, a, their own wallet where they can then swap it out. Very interesting, Aaron. Uh, and based on your experience so far in DeFi, maybe you can give a glimpse into how you see the industry evolving and SmartFi evolving with it uh, over the next year to two years. Well, a great question. And I think you have no, you can look no further than the current infrastructure bill that's being proposed in Congress. It looks like it's going to pass. And you can see what the attention and the success and commercial success of cryptocurrencies is starting to engender the attention of regulators and policymakers. So separate from technology, right? We could have a long discussion about all the wonderful whiz bang things we're going to do with technology, but none of those mean anything unless mm -hmm. society as a whole and the quote unquote sheriffs that they impose upon us, understand the benefits of what we produce. So kind of the way that we look at things from SmartFi's per perspective and future proofing what we're doing uh, is that every innovation that we design must have its core uh, design structure in the acceptance of society with its use. So for example, like our, our uh, stablecoin, no transaction fees, right? It's hard, if you're a policymaker, it's hard to find fault with that. Or um, using our coin that resists bear market volatility and it's structured with a 100% buyback guarantee. So if you're a regulator or you're a you know, legislator, how do you tell everybody this is such a danger or such a, you know, there's risk or all these other things? Well, when there's a 100% buyback guarantee, there's mm -hmm. no need to legislate against it or, or regulate it, right? And that's what we see is that, you know, in, unless your uh, blockchain or your project begins with these core benefits in mind and build the technology to suit the benefits, you're going to be obsolete very quickly, not through technology, but through regulation. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's, that's the way we look at our adoption of future proofing is we make sure that what we build meets the needs, the broader needs of general users who may not be very experienced and not know how to navigate the current risks. Well, we got to take those risks out and make it more usable. Definitely. And I think that's a great approach, Aaron. Uh, so I'm really excited for uh, the decks that you mentioned. Um, that sounds like a, a great addition to the platform. Can you talk about if that is one of them uh, and all of the other sort of main developments that you and your team are looking to deliver out from, from now to the, to the end of 2021? Yeah, definitely. That That's one of the major uh, deployments that we will make. It's been in beta for quite some time. And in fact, it's, it's already had testing on it for several years with the Komodo community. And we forked it, made some changes to it that, that we felt were necessary for our purposes, added our coins. We had to build our blockchain. So a lot of that work has been done for a long time. We went through our security testing and the audits and all of these other things. And so that will give it the broader adoption into the market uh, that they can download the wallet. And now they have a non-custodial wallet that they can swap virtually every coin you know, in the crypto sphere for USD, uh, our SFUSD or our SMTF, which is the uh, speculative coin. And then we have the stable coin. 
Mm-hmm. So that'll definitely be about, in fact, if you just watch our, our Twitter channels and other things, you'll start to see that. We made our press announcement about this mineable stable coin. Uh, I guess that was uh, three weeks ago. Uh, and now kind of our, our going forward approach for the next six months toward the end of the year is that we're gonna, we're gonna combine some of our CFI functionality, which is our lending platform with our DeFi platform. And they're, they're, the core technology to those two are very different because they have different aspects of interoperability. And uh, one, uh, our stablecoin actually makes our CFI platform work more efficiently, even though it's on a blockchain. Mm-hmm. And our DeFi platform provides some advantages to our CFI platform through the uh, speculative coin, but the speculative coin is only issued on the CFI platform. So it's kind of the melding of both of these technologies to make a unified structure. And then later next year, we'll make everything available on a web app. So the CFI platform currently is a web app. The DeFi platform is a local program that you would download to your desktop or your iPhone or Android. And so the combination of those two things later next year will be the next evolution so you can get it all in one location one has kyc aml requirements which is our cfi platform the other one does not because it's DeFi and it uses a real peer-to-peer network to do the swaps and Mm -hmm. it doesn't have uh the the fiat integration so we're not required to do the aml structure in the kyc but if you need fiat integration and you quickly want to trade, go from D- the DEX to the C5 platform, the two will be interoperable. And so you can KYC on one platform, but not the other. And one will check for your C- your KYC compliance and then get you to, to fiat currency on the DEX. And then you can withdraw it on the C5 platform. So it's that integration is going to be critical for a more seamless experience with less risk. Definitely. That sounds great. And it's the best of both worlds. Yep. Great, Aaron. So for the viewers that are looking to follow along uh, with those updates and to start utilizing SmartFi right now before that rolls out as well, what's the best way for them to get involved into the platform and the community? Well, probably the first thing to do is just go to SmartFi.com and you can hit all the links to the social media uh, platforms that we're involved in and Twitter and everything else and Telegram and uh, Discord, you know, just go to those channels. Um, And uh, you can look at all of our blog posts. You can look at all the press releases and sign up for the portal. Uh, and, and that's where you would get the latest news uh, and, frankly, what is happening with the token. So we do have a tokenomics uh, page that will be available next week that will basically show you what's happening with this the, the token sale and watch what happens with the coin. Sounds great, Aaron. Thank you so much for taking the time. All the best with SmartFi moving forward. I will leave those links in the description box below as well. And let's follow up in the near future. Great. Thanks, Ashton.